Yeah, I did that on purpose. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Standing in the rain With his head hung low Couldn't get a ticket It was a sold out show Heard the roar of the crowd He could fit to the scene Put his head to the wall Then like a distant scream He heard one get down people act or not I may or may not uh, decide to um, turn the comments on I don't know I've had I've had to take them off because it, it, it it's just crazy I got um, yeah I haven't shaved I need to shave you see how my hair grows kind of unevenly Anyways, um, no, um, so people are talking about this live or that video or this one. I, I, I've never hid, denied, nor like tried to argue that. I haven't been wrong in anything I've done. I don't know where people get that. I, I guess they, I guess they assume that that's the place I'm coming from because I'm constantly talking about what others have done. Because that's that's what I'm choosing to do on on my channel. I'm, I mean, we we can, and I'm making the time to acknowledge and talk about the stuff that I've done. Um, a lot of stuff though that I've done and everybody always knows it's hindsight's twenty twenty and stuff like that. I didn't 
I know in my heart and in my mind, I came on here just trying to cover and do content. I didn't come on here like, oh, I want to be a troll or, you know, I want to find somebody and target them. I just happened to come on my already YouTube who I was subscribed to a lot of people. And one of those new people I was subscribed to was Johnny Goble. And through that, you know, I've come across Fusion and all these other fucked up ass characters and people. And uh, people are offensive that I've laughed at things books have said. People are offended that I've said this and this. I have had my granddad, like, I don't think people really get it. You can go, you, you can try to gaslight me and say the archive. There's nothing from the archives, like, especially pre-filthy animal of me um, telling somebody ever to die. There's nothing in the archives or in my past. I, fuck the archives. I'm just going to say it like this. I never told anybody to die. Uh, here recently, I did say I wouldn't care if some of them died, but that's not telling them to die or threatening death. I have had people threaten me on raping me, dragging me and beating me and out of my house, um, fucking my dog, uh, making me fuck my dog, kidnapping my dog, killing my dog. Uh, I, I mean, you people... Just because I say two wrongs don't make a right doesn't mean I don't ever succumb to the pitfall of committing a wrong act back on somebody that committed one on me first. And that's the key thing that's the important here. And I don't I'm not here to get on a philosophy debate about whether people should ultimately uh, take revenge or return an action back to somebody, do the same thing back or respond. Like, I, I'm not here to discuss that. You know, if you want to discuss that and, so, you know, that, that go find a philosophy channel or something to talk about that shit on. You know, um, I know that I'm a human and I'm imperfect and I have sin. I'm saved by the grace of God. Okay. and his son dying on the cross for me as well as the rest of mankind. And so anything I've done past or in the future, Jesus already died for. Um, I, I don't, I don't go around on any of you and say that, Unless I've seen a criminal record on you, I don't say, oh, Kaparo's a fucking beat. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to repeat it, because if I say the phrase, they'll fucking clip that. that. That's how careful I have to be just addressing or even going live. And they, they looped me into this shit, because I had a comment that said that they, this person, random YouTuber, right? I made a community post about it. Uh, it was made back in March. Good, good on them. They, they've obviously made alt accounts going back a few months and keep until they use it. That way, it might look like someone legit. That's that's another one of their con, their tricks. So I know that was a workyverse person. Not only from the fact that exactly nearly what he said identically, uh, the methadone for life dude said. So it probably was methadone for life. Um, there's just a slight few variations in it, but it was pretty much the same statement. I, I mean, here we have somebody methadone for life and random YouTuber in there, and they think that I've found a, a medical doctor, which didn't I already come out the other day and say I called a place that has doctors? And, did, didn't I already say that? Could have swore I fucking did. Anyway, but 
So they're trying to say that they think that I secretly have a doctor now, as if it's any other fucking business. And I'm keeping this ruse of this taper up so people just stay off my tra- Uh, It's going to be obvious whenever I take the fucking test. You know, I, I planned on, but, but the, if, if the way, you know, but I've had people and from what they tell me, I shouldn't even do that. Um, I plan on documenting and even if I'm sweating and in full withdrawal, I was going to go live and show myself. I'm down to one eight milligram strip. I have literally. There's all the strips I got left to my fucking name right here. All right. And. I am taking them as I'm supposed to. These are dosages I've already got pre-cut out where the strip is not a full strip. So technically, I'm not even taking a full eight strip. I don't know if you can see that where it's, but what I do is I just fold a small and the pieces I save. Trigger warning, I am showing medication. If you are in recovery or anything or you get offended at the sight of fucking prescribed medication, then there's the door. But basically, a piece is about this size, and I've got a bunch of them that, you know, I keep. And I keep in here because when I get down to that last a uh, piece that'll be less than four milligrams that I take. All everything I've torn off that I've saved in these will be there and available if the withdrawals kick into like really bad gear. So what I can do is then I can take a piece, you know, let them subside till they come back take another piece you know and, and take let and finally i'm i'm gonna run out you know but hopefully by that time i'm taking such small pieces that when i finally take that last itty bitty little piece that saturates whatever little receptors it does you know i'll just have to the rest of the time i'll have to mitigate it with regular you know over-the-counter meds and stuff and weed which is why i have weed I made sure to buy plenty of fucking weed like over a week ago. Like I haven't been to the dispensary in about a week and a half almost. Because I bought an ounce and then I bought uh, a quarter of some really premium stuff. And then I bought two grams of concentrate. Yeah, but I, I don't have any money though. You know, I Grampy's social security check is enough to pay for bills all the weed you need for half a month, fucking medicine, food. I mean, what do you guys think that my granddad makes from his social security? Because I know what you're saying. He's probably got a supplemental or retirement. He does. Yeah. But still, that and social security is not a fucking enough to cover all that. Or out of y'all's fucking minds. And don't be mad about the fact that I had money left to me because I worked a position and somebody admired my loyalty and the work I put into it. You know. And then saying, oh, he, he lied about his, his dental surgery. Yeah, because just, you know. They just give these big ass fucking antibiotics out for nothing, you know. They don't give them out in case you might have an infection related to, oh, I don't know, oral surgery. You know, it's here on the fucking bag. Here's a, oh, here's a fucking, look, here, here's a little thing talking about, talking about instructions following it. Oh, but you know what? This is what, the reason why I'm doing this right here is because. This is the end of this. So enjoy it all and screen grab all you want.
this is going to be the ending of you guys getting your con. You, you guys want to keep throwing up how much I've, I've struggled and went back and forth. Fine. Fine. All right, then. Have it your way. You want to call that bluff? Fine. Call it. We'll call it called as soon as this is over with. All right? Because y'all are fucked up. I don't give a shit what I've laughed about that some of the people you've made enemies with have said about you that's offended any of your people. I really don't give a shit. And the reason why I don't give a shit is because I fucking didn't start this goddamn shit. Let's get that perfectly crystal fucking clear. Johnny Goble didn't start this shit with me. I'll give you a few of the names who started it. Michael Gandy. Excuse me, I don't know this name. Guitar Fingers. And see, that right there is where people are going to say, see, 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 he, he wants to know everybody, so, so he can just purposefully dox them. If I'd came on here and I had let the fact of my first name out and, everything, and I didn't have all this shit happen, there had never been any need if people acted normal that people wouldn't get doxed on here. If they hadn't doxed other people or called family members and done shit. You're not going to assault me and my family and my life and think that I'm just going to sit by and only go on reporting mode. Which you would call bitch ass shit anyways. Let's just keep it real. If I never went on any panels or anything or ever responded, they would have called me a bitch ass coward, right? Well, you you certainly couldn't ever make the argument then that the bitch ass coward, uh, uh, engage, engage is back. I, I didn't engage back shit. I hung up on Fusion every time he called the other time and I stopped hanging or answering after the second time. Because after two unwanted calls, he's harassing me. He is stalking me. And people act like they, they, they don't want to give a shit. That, that, oh, I am the shit stain because I have been so bad to dare retaliate back. And then I got the nerve to point out how that was wrong of myself. That, that, that's what makes these comments just stupid. I almost just want to put my hat over my, my eyes because it's just like, oh my God, did you, are you really sure that you actually watched and digested everything or did you just watch and get angry and fucking click off the video? Because it, 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 it sounds like the latter to me. This is just stupid. Put it this way. When these people started assaulting and saying they're going to ruin my life and attacking me and slandering me and everything, I was on 24 milligrams of Suboxone a day. I was taking six milligrams four to six milligrams of lorazepam every day depending upon what was needed or what i what anxiety i had i was on antidepressant twice a day and i smoked weed as a way so i didn't have to always utilize that last anxiety pill or I didn't have to always because some days I wouldn't even take a third suboxone like I need to restate that the suboxone I was on 16 to 24 milligrams per day as needed and I was on four to six milligrams of Ativan as needed I'm on one milligram of Ativan per day half a milligram in the morning half a milligram in the fucking evening to prove that there's the half that's for this evening. There's Tylenol I'm taking. And there's the antibiotic. You know, so. I don't have 
add a van up to my gourd, nor am I taking it like that. And people are going to say, it's because he don't have a, a good supply and he's uh, he's out of a supplier is why he's doing no. I was told three months ago that I was getting discharged from the current place that had my care. And they technically were only supposed to give me a prescription um, 30 days after the discharge date. Well, the discharge date was in June. Or, yeah, it was right, right before the 1st of June was the discharge date. The end of May. So, and I got a refilled in and they did have to give me another one. So I guess they did technically, no, no, because that, I, I was supposed to have been referred, but they did set up another appointment and have me come back because they had to re re refill my medicine. They had not gave me a referral. Well, that time they said that they weren't going to be able to do it again and that, you know, if I didn't get a referral, I, I better find something on my own. And I talked about what if I wanted to, well, well, what if I don't have another place to find or something? I mean, like, I mean, can I taper off? And I'm, I'm, I, like, I thought tapering had to take a year or some months or whatever, like outpatient. Um, inpatient, obviously, probably wouldn't. I, I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. Uh, this is not medical advice. Remember, always consult your professional for any personal stuff. But I, I, she told me that it, that it was more than enough. That's the way she acted like point blank. Um, she also said that. I mean, she didn't say I wouldn't have any discomfort at all with the suboxone, but I ought to be able to taper down to where it's minimal with that last supply if how I do it. Same with the Ativan. Now, the people I finally called the other day on the phone, and I talked to them about this, and I'll be completely honest. Why did I call? Because I woke up that morning and I, I, I was like in withdrawal when I woke up, which is weird because the half-life, I, I didn't understand being in withdrawal that early. Like that, the last time when I, when I went down to, to just one strip and I t told the story about how I was drenched in sweat and I had to take it off and I was in the fetal position. Like, yeah, I, I understood getting in withdrawal at that point or experiencing it, but I didn't expect to experience that while I'm still on the same. So I called and I did express concern that, you know, I'm worried what's going to happen. Like I, I, I said, and I'm also, I have concern about the lorazepam because of the, the seizure and the dangerous factor. And, uh, and so they told me about, a study it's a research study that has to do with detoxification and withdrawal um, people that have been on MAT or they've been taken to box and stuff like that they said that if I made them made, made an appointment and came in depending upon my assessment I would either be outpatient help taper or in be inpatient well considering the appointment is going to be literally just a few days before i'd probably hold on i'd have about four strips left at that point so when i get there I'm already going to be very low down compared to where I started. And I hope that they evaluate and, you know, put me in, in the outpatient program that they have. Uh, I may have to go inpatient. Uh, either way, I'm open to. Um, and I don't know why. F forget 
the hater, the hate group and stuff. But I don't know why people like from anonymous dudes or gene team or anyone's happy. It, it's because they really don't care. There, there were people that said that, uh, who were honestly trying to, you know, and not trying to be dicks like squirrel or something. And it's truth. They don't care. They're on YouTube or their own, um, channels and stuff. And I came on here to build a channel, but it's like, you know, it's almost like those weird things you saw on social media being bad and everything. It, it's like, yeah, that's becoming my life. Like, because, and it never was my life like that before up until this point. And I posted a community post the other day about from a creator that had, uh, was talking about how bad locale culture is. Um, some of the people that have been, you know, deemed as locales or whatever on the internet, it is shown through time and time videos and corroborated witnesses as well as evident that a lot of shit that those people that, that, that would end up happening was pushed and egged up on the part of the trolls. Now, these people have said that they acted like that they sent an ambulance here to save my life when really they sent cops here. No EMS ever. And they had me mistreated that time another two times you know this stupid fucking one of their I don't even think he's around because of all the shady shit he probably dealt in he probably was scared that's I've never seen him but canine rescue is the one that leaked my out my address they may have had my name and stuff at the time, but they did. They wouldn't have been able to find my address because I had just was in, had to move, and so, you know, like the only address they would have been able to find online would have been the address I just moved from. And I did not give out. My, I did not come on a video and say, you know, hey, my name is blah, 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 blah. No, people, see, I started intermixing with these groups of people early on, and I was completely naive to protecting my privacy and, and, and any stuff like that, because whenever I would get to meet or know a YouTuber offline or through text or whatever, I would tell them my name and stuff. And that is how it slowly got out. And then they found my very old, old YouTube account that did have my actual name uh, that I made when I was fucking 14. And that is how I got docs and everything. Ever since then, it's been like I'm the ping pong ball and it's two paddles. I'm just getting knocked back and forth, back and forth. And in between getting knocked back and forth, I got something to say, and it's it's not nice. It's not pleasant, but it's it's like, you know, how many times do you got to say, please stop, leave me alone, like, you're wrong. Uh, okay, if we don't agree, then just leave me be. Like, how many times do you got to do that until you actually just fucking finally just say, all right. Fuck you then, you fucking blah, 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 bitch, and blah, 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 blah. You know, that's what's going to happen. I mean, it is. These people saying that, oh, he's your daddy, he's your daddy. That's why I said the shit I said to Fusion. Fuck you, Fusion. I don't give a shit. You... Way before December, which was the first time I ever said something really out the way towards Fusion. 
he had already went out. My loved ones threatening to uh, bring on and expose and like like that is funny how before the interview he ever did with my ex wife it was we're gonna get so and so on here and you know we're gonna find out all the dirty blah 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 you know it was never well we're just gonna get on and interview and see what they have to say about him it was never neutral like that because from the beginning it was planned that you know oh she's an ex yeah she'll probably more than likely definitely trash him especially depending on how he was towards her or how they just assumed shit about me you know, it was never like, well, we're just going to see what she has to say. No, no. Now, if they had done stuff like that, people might actually can look at some of their stuff and say, well, it, it is so, sort of coming from an unbiased, but it's not. Mr. Fusion TV is the mod for Xanim, is a mod, excuse me, for Xanime X, who is one of the people that Ryan Upchurch said, and I quote, Ryan Upchurch, when I'm quoting this, but, Xanime a fat hoe, Xanime a fat hoe, Xanime a fat hoe. All right. And something about, I don't know, a lip bump, herpes on lip. I, I don't know. Maybe he's saying that to Ikamel or somebody else. I, I don't know. I didn't watch and was into all that. Okay. I just know a little bit about it. And, you know, th this is somebody that Mr. Fusion, you know, he likes his music. Uh, you know, he, he was going hard at Johnny Goble for stalking. Uh, if anyone remembers the video I just played the other day, I could play it right now. But, you know, I've seen it so damn many times and other people have to the point they probably don't want to see it again. But, you know... How can you be a supporter of a person like that that is calling for the ending of cyberbullying, which would include locale and locale culture shit, calling for the end of gang stalking, for the end of you know, being responsible, they talked about, with platforms where you have a big following. And compared to me and my little platform, the Workyverse member, F Fusion, them, they all have enormous bigger platforms. Enormously bigger, excuse me, platforms than, than I do. But they're not being responsible in any of that. They're not saying, well, you know, he's just a scumbag in our opinion. And we don't recommend, you know. And we're done with no. They are saying actively, we own this motherfucker. We gonna break this motherfucker. Oh fuck him. He's gonna be in for it. I hope this motherfucker dies. He they say. Oh, he can go suck start a pistol. Oh, uh, he's a fucking faggot. You know when I got fucking fusion talking about Johnny calling people gay yeah we've all been hypocrites in our lives at one point or another and i will give credit where credit is due red reaper uh pointed out that but i ain't gonna give the guy that much credit because he did go along with a lot of the same shit that's grown into what it is today as a result of it so and he said that it's been time for people to move on, but nobody moves on. Nobody tries to, to leave Square alone and let him do his own content and maybe attract his own audience. No, we got to keep inserting this artificial audience, uh, mostly worky verse and stuff, and the few people that do come around, Chuck. And, and then he, he just never grows because he, we keep him in a constant state of agitation and everything else like i am done and one i'm ready to take my power back um because you people don't have uh and shouldn't have the right to do that stuff and get me like that 
I don't exactly know how that happened per se. I, I don't. Um, maybe it's just a result of how I'm, you know, I, I, I've never been the mean person from school. I was always the person that, like, you got them literally going around hashtagging the word biscuit and shit, all because I was explaining to them how what they've done maybe triggers me more than the average person or everything because of all the sh the hell I went through as a as a younger person growing up, having my brother, you know give me fucking carpet burns and dragging me around, having people shoot shit at me, uh, getting fucking ganged up on and beat up in high school. Waiting for a bus one day outside and somebody comes around all of a sudden sucker punches you. Having shit talk to you in computer class. So you say something back and then getting the crap, you, your wig knocked off and getting knocked into a fucking computer screen and monitor and then into the floor and corner of a table. Having a fucking bump on your head about the size that fucking big when, by the time you come to, you know. I've dealt and met with my share of aggressors growing up and these people I mean they take they they take it they take it to all different new levels never done before you know you got people like PD that started the the oh I got his mom who i was, I guess, too trusting and thinking of the world as not that fucking fucked up of a cynical place to explain because, you know, everybody, it seemed like there's a big, there was a big thing about, you know, oh, you can't be mean or disrespectful to ladies on YouTube, especially ladies that have been through stuff. So, you know, aside from that seeming to be a trend and people getting on to me regularly because for some reason I would just seem to have women that wanted to uh, really join in on this shit with Fusion and them. Whether it's, I don't even want to say her name, starts with a B, but whether it's her or any one of them, wacky, whatever. You know, and so I say, well, you know, I think to myself, I'll share my story about my mom. You know, I, I need to kind of talk about it anyways, because I never, you know, I've never really, I guess, cleared it all up for myself. But I, I said what happened to my mom and her life, how her life was difficult, and how she died back in 2017. You know, I got woken up by my granddad to tell me that my mom had died. It's my fucking so-called piece of shit stepdad called. And I could tell by the way he was acting like he was upset that he was putting on. He wasn't as upset as he was making it out to believe. And I threatened him. I sure did. I said, motherfucker, you got better than never see you. I said, if I was like, of course I won't because he fucking drives a truck probably still gambling away until his family dies and they leave him stuff. You know, he's just a spoiled fucking brat. At least that's what my mom said when what she learned from his family dynamics and all that. But he basically assaulted my mom, pretty much. He assaulted her verbally, physically. And he completely um, 
you know, kept something hidden from her that nobody should ever kept keep hidden from someone, especially if you're trying to pursue, pursue a romantic slash sexual relationship with that person. And uh, if my mom hadn't had the self-control that she had, which is where I get mine from. So you people say that I don't have no self-control. Fuck you. She would have cut his dick off and killed him and went to prison. But she didn't want to do that. So she married him. <laughs> Those seem to be her alternatives. Well, I guess there was a third one. But Oh, um, I just want to say, too, if anybody has ever had a, a skin issue where, like, you have an ingrown hair or a splinter or something, and it, and it, and it like, you, you somehow can't get it out, or you have, like, God forbid, a boil or a cyst or something, get the, uh, this is my recommendation. I'm sure there's other ones that are probably just as good or, you know, might be even something better. I don't know. But Prid, uh, Prid Drawing Salve by Highlands is uh, this stuff right here. It uh, It is really good for, because I've got a little thing. I, I've got it on my leg and it, and I'm I'm putting it on there and putting a band-aid over that. And what that does is that literally it, it draws all that stuff right to the top almost. So if you have an, a situation where you've got something then like the pores clogged, you know, you can't get any of it out. You know, sometimes you people have to go to a, a doctor and, and get it lanced because it gets so hardened and uh the hair regrows back down in it or something and more debris and stuff uh, accumulates along with pus or bacteria uh, that can cause an infection. And then you have just a fucking like little circle, a little like semi solid circle right up underneath your skin. And you're wondering like, what the fuck is it? And it, it's all that. Yeah, it's fucked up. I'm sure some of you probably have looked at YouTube videos and seen like the the people that professionally do it and put it on video. I don't know why people love to watch that stuff. That stuff is so disgusting to me. And I've watched some of them. I ain't gonna lie, but man, seeing that nasty stuff come out of the body is just yeah, yeah, it's just nasty. That shit is nasty. Now, I'll go ahead and say it like this, and this is what I, after the last person that uh, put out some of my stuff that I returned fire on was AD, I thought about it, and uh, you know, aside from maybe people that I've already, like, Mustard. I know, I know. I showed a video and I went over, I just went over his stuff and things. And that's because of what he, you know, everything is has a reason. It's not like I caught on the internet, started picking some of these random folks out, and say, "Hey, I want to be your friend." Now you get a dox, and you get a dox, and you get the dox, and you get dox. It never happened like that, and they know it. Let some of them on my Facebook. And that's personal to me, all right? They may not think of Facebook or anything is fucking personal, but it is to me. I really thought that 
some of them were trying to be friends. And they weren't. And everything that how Fusion lied, he lied it all out on Rich's stream. It, it just confirmed it. I guess he thought that I never was ever going to see Rich's stuff or watch it. I thought about restreaming that just to show it in his own words. But look, it's on Rich's page. If you want to watch it, go watch his intro to the Worky Verse. And just keep in mind that everything Fusion is putting together, he's crafting in his head as he goes. But he does tell the truth. Our guitar fingers saw me first and said, quote, that he knew I was going to be something special. That's how these people look at this shit. Targeting somebody and making them into a spectacle. They don't want it done to themselves because otherwise they wouldn't operate how they do. And if they didn't want this to keep being perpetuated, they would operate like others or other YouTubers do. You know, like even the big YouTubers, people like Ethan Klein, or Logan Paul, and yes, I know these people are controversial in a way, like not everybody likes them, but, or people like uh, H3H3, you know, or, or not H3H3, Keemstar, I mean. Um, I'm sure that you can look up and you can find out, like, where are these people, you know, and their stuff. I'm sure it's out there. Not as widespread, though, because they're big, they have big platforms and they obviously can get shit reported, mass reported and stuff. Um, which it seems that's a, only the only way YouTube takes any fucking action is if you can get something mass reported. Well, good luck get something mass reported when you don't have a mass number of followers. Something the Workyverse has. It's just not right. They've, they've just made, you know, if, if I can be a thousand percent here without being judged, they have caused me to, to, uh, to feel wrongfully. Keep this in mind. It's not like they, made me have a epiphany of myself they falsely and wrongfully have caused me on more than one occasion to just give up They make fun of mental illness regularly. They make fun of my mental illness that I have, which is just anxiety and major depression. But those are, that's still a mental illness, major depressive disorder. You know, it's not occasional depressive disorder. It's major depressant, depressive disorder, excuse me. And, you know, to have people like, I, I can show it here, hold on. Let's see. 
Major depressive disorder has been ranked as the third cause of the burden of disease worldwide in 2008 by the WHO, which is, for those that don't know, is the World Health Organization, which is, man, it's got a lot of controversy also, but it's basically a massive, it's a big, supposedly not-for-profit, I believe, organization that deals with issuing the recommendations and stuff that the CDC and other places take, you know, the, WH, the WHO. If you don't know, look it up. It has projected this disease will rank first by 2030. It is diagnosed when an individual has a persistently lower depressed mood or decreased interest in pleasurable activities, feelings of guilt or worthlessness, lack of energy, poor concentration, appetite changes, psychomotor retardation or agitation, sleep disturbances, or suicidal thoughts. This activity reviews the evaluation and management of major depressive disorder. Disruptive mood. Uh, Biological, genetic, environment, and psychosocial factors. Considered mainly due to abnormalities earlier, it was thought of in serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Use of antidepressants and neuroreceptor inhibitors. GABA is what um, the benzodiazepines help produce. And see, so GABA affects it. And not only that, I have regular anxiety disorder. And I made that known early on, okay? Because when this dark trolling stuff and things came out, last year and people you know wanted me to to get into that i clearly said and i got made fun of for it too for saying that i was a citizen you know i don't pretend to consider myself like a gangster or an outlaw i don't put on a front that's why i named and came up with the name square I mean, you know, I, I didn't, and I never had any issues with being uh, the type that was not, you know, I, I'm low, I'm, I'm not adverse to taking risks or, you know, doing crazy stuff and different things. And that's what I guess you could say my friends ended up helping me have more of a ability to do was to kind of walk on the wild side a little bit sometimes and take risk. But I, I don't, you know, even from all the shit that I suffered growing up and bullying in school, I never had a gang. Like I looking back, if I could try to imagine back then, and it be a, a a gang or a mob like fucking Workyverse. Oh my god! Imagine them fucking going around school and saying "moo motherfucker" and talking about Workyverse strong and and shit. like, dude. I would end up having to leave schools. That did happen. I had to leave schools once because of issues. Not like, oh, he was kicked out or whatever. Like, no, we, I went home, complained, complained day after day. Finally, you know, 
I got what I wanted, which was I, I basically vocalized. I said, I, I don't want to go there anymore. You know. And my dad, when we moved to Nashville, he enrolled me into a uh, private uh, Church of Christ based uh, Christian school. It was called Ezel Harding. Uh, it's on Bell Road in Antioch. It's on the main Bell Road section right before you get to all the little mall places and places all to eat and where the interstate runs through. It's right before, right up the road there and right before it is the church that is connected to the school. And basically most of the kids that went there were had either were in that church and their family had been longtime association members of the school or church or what have you. So, you know, I was a fucking, I, I was outsider. Like I, I did not belong. You know, I was the, the boy from Missouri and I went there for the rest of eighth grade and just the start about ninth grade and about the start when that's the when the start of ninth grade came is when I told my dad I was like how about instead of you paying you know and that is the main thing I used to uh, sell it was like you know you are paying a lot of money each year or just on my tuition I said I was like I'd rather just go to the because I had met some of the local public school kids bowling and I got along with them, you know, and I asked them about their school, what it was like. And I just was like, you know, fuck this. I mean, th those kids in that Christian school were some of the worst I've ever like. They would come up behind you and literally grab like we had to wear these collared shirts, right? As part of the uniform and uh, khaki pants. But on Fridays, we got to wear jeans. Woo -hoo. Anyway, they would come up behind, and not just me, they did to others, but they, they would do it to me a lot. They'd come up and just grab you by the fucking nipples and squeeze and shit. Weird ass shit. Like, gay shit. I mean, like, no offense. I ain't got nothing against it, but, like, I don't want my nipples squeezed. I ain't into that. And, you know, Between that and getting fucking, uh, you know, talked down to and all that, it, it's just all of those experiences are, are in, deep in my psyche. And so I come online and I get that treatment, but magnified on the scale that it is. Like, none of you got any fucking right by what is fact to be arguing I'm in the wrong. The only thing I'm in the wrong in is that I don't have a lot of experience with dealing with people that are vamp energy type vampire shit people because that's what you guys are you just want to drain the energy from me and call it milk like you're sick i understand cyrax is a bad dude all right You know, because I've actually did some research on that. And, you know, I, I get it. I get why some people get these cultish, uh, you know, type followings and not in a good sense. And get called locales, what have you.
but I am not somebody who, you know, for example, that one guy that I didn't even know about really, like, I guess when I was watching YouTube, I just never got on that side growing up, but, um, uh, that Randy Stare person, you know, I mean, and then you got, um, uh, Chris fucking Chan, you know, that was, you know, And these people that go along with trying to exacerbate these people, even if they're, you know, pieces of shit or whatever, then I, I, I don't know why they don't just like move, try to petition to get the person deplatformed, banned, report them not give them any numbers on their stream, but there's just always going to be those people, I guess, that watch or participate no matter what or how bad they're, they're doing something because, you know, I watched a video and it, it, it was talking all about this type of culture and thing online. And how people have, and even the guy making the video, he was like, he said, it's definitely part of it that, um, you know, fuck it, I'm going to find that video right now. Got to add this in. I hope they find that woman. That's crazy. It seems like I, all the time I'm hearing about somebody that's, that's birthing somebody and and it, it, it dies or they abandon it or something. It's just fucked up. These are horror cows. Now, I can understand, the, but just watch this video. Let's go ahead a little bit. Into it. Oh. Are you dead right now? Hey, this is Nick Bates. Much a mixture of comedy and horror. <laughs> and I have a problem. Horror show of Foodie Beauty. Hey. Offered him foreplay if he would come over and bring me a um, couple of whoppers. The decade long degradation of the goth wizard of Wyoming. Pissing me off! It pisses me off! Or the life spanning tale of our CPU goddess Chris Chan. And for God's sake, stay away from that Psychopedia Dramatica page. There are plenty of options to choose from with a variety of things that make each of these exceptional individuals interesting in their own right. But on the other side of the coin, we do have the lesser known and lesser talked about phenomenon of horror cows. I hope you all fucking die. And while those who know what I'm talking about are probably dreading the territory we're about to embark on, to those who don't, they are the twisted and disturbing end of the low cow spectrum. Individuals who cross the line from exceptional to demented. Horror cow. A low cow that is primarily known for their disgusting and or creepy behavior. Horror cows may typically be known for one or multiple of the following. Zoo. Neck. Corporal. Exceptionally violent behavior. All right, I gotta be honest. I do not know what the fuck that last one is. Whatever coprophilia, I do not know the definition of that. Here. Excessive attention seeking, displays, and or disgusting, 
creepy and or horrifying behaviors. Abusers, groomers, and even killers, horror cows are the individuals who were once noticed for their odd and funny behavior that later showed their true and repugnant colors, either with their disgusting desires or tragically horrific actions. And the worst part about them is that they often show signs well before anything actually comes to fruition. In some cases, straight up telling you just what evils they'll commit long before they ever act, only to be ignored what the fuck? until it's too late. While some end up being absolute curveballs like the earth-shattering tragedy of Barbara Chandler. Yeah, that, that was just fucked up. Chandler. Some others were right in the open long before anyone took any action. But you know what? Maybe we should look at some examples. Maybe we need to get to know just what a horror cow is and how bad things can really get. Everybody who survives this, we get to meet their we get to meet their favorite superheroes among others. Oh my god, this dude. How could you do that to your own mother? You are a vile like I understand why he has videos dedicated to him. I truly do. Um, I know uh, this is, he's actually one of the things I think in this video where they speak about that somebody was egging him on. It, it doesn't matter. Like At the end of the day, even if you're getting egged on in some way or manipulated, that that would be called if, if it leads to a criminal act all that that's going to result in is going to be a mitigating factor part of it it's not going to result in you like if somebody tells you to go commit a crime or they work up to somehow talking you into it over a period of time they may have some response i, I doubt you hardly ever hear anything like that among other and everything uh, but yes, there are those are going to survive and those are not going to survive. Okay, that was creepy. But aside from that, the decision is definitely supported by me, but uh, also going to be made in part by your goddess of this earth. Oh my god, I don't even know if I can actually watch. You might those. be asking why I'm lumping good old Chris here. And the fact is, Chris Chan entered the realm of horror cow when they committed the unforgivable sin of Sigmund Freud's wet dreams back in 2021. Why did you interrupt my video, Barbara? They're quite honestly the best and most blatant example of when someone crosses that line. If you're a viewer who has no idea who Chris is, well, there's simply far too much to go into, and you're going to have to sit through Geno Samuel's endless documentary. But the gist is, Chris is probably the most documented person in history, with their odd life being obsessively cataloged since the early 2000s and symbiotically fueled by their insistence on sharing every single aspect of their life with the internet at large. I was a cyber boy since 2007. Me? In turn, they're relentlessly tormented and trolled for this, and as their mental health has continually declined, so has their grasp on reality. A lot of the lingo and slang around lol cows comes from their story, one that started as them just being a high-functioning autistic man who wanted to find a boyfriend-free girl and write their god-awful comic son at you, slowly spiraling over the years into Chris Chan's love quest is synonymous with them. While it was hilarious to joke about and laugh at at the time, given how things have played out, we really should have seen it as a bit of a warning sign. Chris has always been a gullible and eager individual, but as the delusions and mental illness started to ramp up, it became it in this case. And for anyone who has followed the prison arc, Chris did the unspeakable. He fucked his dementia-ridden mother. And while there are plenty of jokes I could make, I just don't think it would be appropriate in this case. And for anyone who has followed yeah, I, mm. the prison arc, you know Chris has shown zero remorse or regret for his actions. And in some cases... What? That's even more. 
God. Even showed contempt. I'm surprised he hasn't been beat. Like, in the, like, he must be alone. For Barb, refusing to acknowledge what he did is wrong or even remotely bad. And if you think this is all messed up and disgusting, well, yeah. strap yourselves in because it only gets worse from here. That's Chris great. might have done the unspeakable, but he is far from how dark the abyss can get. Who the fuck is Donald? If you think your friends are safe on the internet, let's just say that uh, NSP will get your fucking... In, he already got your information, and now he's going to get Boone's info. So I would really, I really suggest you tell Boone to take those videos down, or pretty much, let's just say you're not going to be safe online. Now, our boy Jonathan Ross is a much more niche subject, but for anyone who used to watch internet blood sports or was a big fan of Jim, you probably are very aware of who this individual is. Ross first became known in the at the time small community of DSP trolls. In particular, getting into online spats and quote-unquote debates with members of the podcast Sons of Kojima. What is it about Fred that you have such a big issue with? Anything. Just tell me anything. I want to know since we're talking. Um, that I'm a, Fred, I'm a, Fred Fox has, I'm a, like, Like Fred Fox, I'm uh, basically, um, uh, <sighs> oh, is that what it is? At first glance, what? And he was just some spurgy YouTube bottom feeder who couldn't speak a coherent sentence without. And the mo first of all, basically, I'm uh, I have to say is that I'm uh, I don't know. First of all, I'm uh, how come like I'm uh. And would routinely Damn. make an ass of himself in the process. He quickly became a target of Kiwi Farms and would be documented and trolled by those interested in the newfound lol cow who was just at the time beginning to emerge. His awful rap songs. Every single time I go on the block end, I go and get my clock end. I shoot a ginger's head off with my clock end. The cops are coming after me. Don't do that. End. Terrible YouTube videos. I love my. Uh, I love people uh, with red hair. Videos are like ignored for some reason. An absolute spur. I said that. Gouts oh. is what initially made up the majority Somebody of. Somebody laugh. Take a shower. Clean up. Stink. Damn. Jesus Christ. Not clean underwear. He also had leaked calls get posted where he would scream at his grandmother and it would be known just how dirty and repulsive he physically smelled. Take your shower. Clean up. Stink. Damn. Jesus Christ. Not clean underwear. But I have some clean clothes once in a while. Damn. Jesus Christ. I would like you to wash your hair and put some soap under your armpits. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll decide what to do until then. Around you, thank you. Going on to admit the fact that he had shit himself up until the age of 12. Uh, Do Jim naked asked, kids get uh, your Ross, rock hard or you only mentioned on a stock? previous live stream that you used to shit yourself up to the age of 11. Did you wear diapers up until then or just at five? Pretty much. Uh, I actually, actually, to be honest, I, was, I stopped wearing pull-ups when I was 12. All this is incredibly Damn. suspect. And anyone who, what the fuck? who has delved into true crime knows just how concerning all these behaviors are. Ross here, Ross is what we call a, he's a gem. He's a diamond in the rough. He just needs to be polished a little until you've got a nice giant 19 carat piece of autism that you can slap on a ring and give to the girl that you love. And once Mr. Mediker got involved and egged Ross on, it would cause all the dirt to bubble up to the surface. Ross would admit to being a pedophile. I tried hiding that for the longest time, but you know, I guess I failed to do that. Oh well. <laughs> See, I, I I get where they make, and, and there's no way that I can be put into this category. But you, I mean, <laughs> those people 
that are like stream sniping and hating and saying all the bullshit about me. That's exactly what they'll say. Ser I mean, I, I don't see how an, an unproductive member of society, number one, who was working just up until they moved last year, like, uh, and had a car and stuff like working outside of home because now I'm just doing stuff that's, you know, I mean, to be honest, I ain't gonna lie, independent contractor sort of kind of like how people that, 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 that the, uh, the work I did before stuff, but I don't have to use car. I can do it at home. But that that's just, you know, temporary. But besides that, I worked up until then, had an issue with my car, put it in the shop. It was worse than can be, so just figured it'd be best to just sell it. Got the, the most money we needed out of it and use that to continue living, all right? This is still during COVID and all that. And then, um, uh, Whenever I start coming online and I end up moving and people be like, well, why'd you boo? Why'd you boo? Tell them why'd you boo? Well, that that's really, it don't matter. You know, that's something that happened in my life. I should have, it should, I should have never shared it or anything. Uh, of course, the people that I talk to on, uh, that I met online who told other people online that I wasn't talking to who my name was and stuff, they could find out anyways. Well, it doesn't matter though, because they know also that nothing resulted as a result of it. All that resulted was I had to pay for the shit that I accidentally damaged. That's what I had to do. Oh, and I made sure to uh, give the money that was out of my car to my granddad for the deposit because he lost his deposit. So I made sure to do that too. But yeah, I don't give a shit about my granddad or be fair with him at all. Are you admitting it now? Yeah, <laughs> I am. I tried hiding it, but you know, I failed to do so. I failed well, to. Well, that's sick. That this guy is number one admitting that he's a, he's a, I mean, to admit you're a pedophile, that's like admitting that you've been active. I mean, it, it's it's fucked up out of the way because there's some people you hear of that admit to having those tendencies, but are never. And then you have people that straight up have, and that's just like, you know, like I, I completely agree with what Florida did recently by moving the death penalty for people that harm someone, especially once they're un if, or if they're under the age of 12. I would just go for uh, a kid period up until they're a minor, but you know, Florida set twelve is the thing. I failed to mm -hmm. I failed to lie to people, and I failed to hide it. So there you go. What were you lying about? Why did you want to lie? Why did you want to cover it up? Why were you lying? Because pretty much I just didn't want to face that part of myself. It's more like there you go. Admit to having violent sexual fantasies. Well, I mean, like, a girl about having rape fantasies about, like, what? I don't know, really. I mean, I already, like, moved on from her, but, like, then again, like, you know, fucking, like, my, I, it's my ex-girlfriend, and it's, like, fucking, like, how, like, you know, just, like, holy water or something like that, whenever, <laughs> like, I, whenever, like, or, like, sunlight or something like that. Like, whenever you just look at her, you just feel like you want to rip her, and that's your weakness. What? And his need to share his thoughts and opinions no. about pedophilia would only ramp up. Fucking he would sick. proceed to put out death threats, dox people, and go on his screams in rage about the violent things he wanted to do to children. This culminated in one of the darkest yet most hilarious arcs for Mr. Medicare. <laughs> and would end with Ross eventually being pulled off the internet. Right. With his legacy being that of one of the most unhinged people to ever disgrace the World Wide Web. And while he has never been confirmed to have committed anything too atrocious, the implication of what could have happened and his unrelenting need to express his degenerate and predatory desires 
left no, a lot of us no, aware no. of just what could have happened. In the words of a wheelchair-bound well, opiate that. addict, Dude, if he had more brains, he'd be really fucking dangerous. While Ross Damn. didn't cross the line as hard as Chris Chan had with his actions, what makes him far worse is the possibility of just what he could have done if he wasn't brought to the greater attention of the internet by Jim. That dude fucked up. I'm not looking at screens for a second. One butthole sits in the farthest corner of a room. What? Talking to a microphone and trying not to laugh about stupid things. Oh. Butthole. Butthole. Butthole, butthole, butthole. Big, hairy, oily, scary butthole. Randy's stare is one of the simultaneously darkest and most hilarious characters that the internet has ever seen and single-handedly encapsulates what a sprinkler will look like in the age of social media. The man is honestly a really twisted joke brought to life. Randy would come to prominence in 2017 thanks to his horrific act of violence. Immortalized as a Columbine copycat who idolized Eric and Dylan, attempting Damn. this by taking the lives of his co-workers before proceeding to turn the himself. But that's where most people's knowledge of Randy tends to end, portraying him as just an unhinged criminal. Maybe they vaguely know about the EGS, aka the god-awful flash show that he made about Danny Phantom, but other than that, there really isn't anything here that could make him be seen as a lull or even a horror cow. That's only if you stopped your dive at Randy on the surface. The twisted reality is that Randy was a terminally online attention whore who wanted nothing more than to find the fame and fortune YouTube once offered. His legacy spans a damn near decade, creating various forms of different kinds of content. From ripping off the AVGN's bullshit series, You know what sucks? Everything in your house past midnight. Attempting to mimic Make Me Bad's spastic toy skits. Don't you fucking say it! To emulating Jackass. Alka Seltzer, round two, prove it. That's what she said. That's what she said. And terrible vlogs. Just, just know that I do like even like the people I've had arguments with or people I've had I've blocked over the years and all that stuff. Just just know that I still truly appreciate everyone who has supported my channel. Randy tried everything, but never found the success he was looking for. He really was an extremely odd individual, and you don't even have to look further than his public videos to see this. He always spoke and acted with an awkward and almost alien demeanor, showing a complete lack of social awareness. But it's the behind the scenes stuff that really shows off how twisted and warped his mind actually was. The day of massacre, Randy would release his infamous video depicting what he wanted to do and would also upload a massive archive of journals and vlogs where he depicted his life story and what led up to his actions. There is a clear hatred for his parents for not accepting or understanding him for who he felt he was. I'm your fucking kid, and you don't know anything about me. You don't know how I truly feel about anything, and I can't tell you that stuff. And then all he fucking seemed to care about was, like, me getting a full-time job and making money and then trying to move out of the fucking house and start my own life and all this shit, which I knew I, never, I was never going to do. It's all about money, isn't it? Damn. And guess what? Money's fucking worthless. Uh, no, it's Fuck not. Dead. And again, despite the goofy fucking Ember's Ghost Squad show,
what the he fuck? wouldn't be all that different from this dude is cra- man other mentally ill criminals but this is where he becomes a horror cow like if you look on the poster behind me those were inspired by ember mclean which is a ghost from a tv show called danny phantom which started back in 2000 man i don't i've watched that show so long ago i barely remember that three 2004 you know i was in late elementary school at that time but this ghost this woman always connected with me ever since i what? first saw her it just something changed it was like a spark the fuck? and it just connected with me it made me feel warm inside and it felt very familiar which was strange it was like i'd seen her before bro you're strange but at the time it was a brand new show and nothing had ever been done like that before with that type of character like you never saw that character anywhere else except that show and um Obviously. i just grew attached to her unlike anything i ever have in my life randy Damn. was consumed and obsessed I mean, with ember mcclain going as far as trying to dress as her attached, like, but i ain't never heard of a stain on the or... floor like that splotch you'll see on my carpet that was oh my an Ember God. thing. I just I wanted to make my skin as white as possible to look like her. Oh my God! I thought he was about I to, say to be completely else. white. So I bought this this body paint, which was like I don't okay. even know what it was. It was like latex shit that like it becomes like glued to your skin and you gotta peel it off. And I- that's fucked up. All right, I'm not gonna continue watching this. I'm going to talk about. Play this video from It's Just Aaron. Make sure to like and subscribe to It's Just Aaron. Yesterday, Mother Jones released a long form article titled The Website That Wants You to Kill Yourself and Just Won't Die. The article. Wow. The title is, if you could guess, about Kiwi Farms, a website that, if you spend any amount of time online, needs no introduction. Although it was brief. I've seen the, the YouTube channel and stuff, but I, I've never, so I, I know that they cover local. It was shut down in late 2022. Kiwi Farms, as I am recording this, is still online, although unreliably. Regrettably, I must inform you all that for a time, I lurked on the website. You see, once Gino Samuel was about 40 parts into his epic length Christian docuseries, Damn. I decided to give it a look just to see what was there. Previously, I'd only browsed the quickie, which also hosts an unhealthy amount of information about a single individual. I never made an account or posted anything, but I hopped from thread to thread about- Yeah, all this about trying to own an individual, post every single thing that they can possibly either from other sources or whatever they they get uh the people they pay like you know i had them threatening they were if i didn't come on panel at a time what they were threatening here a while back was they were gonna and i imagine that they ran into the same issue i did which I, I, I'm not going to, but basically uh, couldn't because the person who knows was like, I hope they're okay wherever they are, but I, I haven't seen or heard from them in years. And I used to run around with a pe- group of people that he did. That's how I met him. And We became friends, yeah. Uh, Also, while I was in my active addiction, you know, he was, he knew people that that I wanted to know, you know. So, you know, without going into too much greater detail, they talked about, because this guy is uh, not heterosexual, he's uh, homosexual. They talked uh, that I must have done, you know, because obviously I'm friends with him. Like, oh, yeah, I must have, uh, you know, done something with him. Now, they're the only, you know, and, and I hung out with him around here. All right. Now, this is a small town. 
everybody knows how small towns are when it comes to rumors. A rumor gets out in a small town, it's like, you know, it it's gone like wildfire quick. Well, if something that had, if at all, if there's any credibility to those so-called allegations, because that's what there are, they're bullshit allegations. Actually, it's just made up bullshit. It's not even allegations of anything. Um, you bet your ass, like it would have uh, people around here, or the people, the other people I hung, or people he was around or hung out. Like it would have gotten around. There's, there's no question about that. But they tried to say that shit and say, oh, we're going to get him on and he's going to do a tell all, you know, da 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 da. And I'm like, so, so they, you know, try to make it seem like always they've, like they've already talked to these this person or something. And, uh, you know, uh, there was a there was a time um, whenever I went to get some uh, pills, I remember. Um, and we had, uh, went for a ride, um, cause I had, it had not been long since I'd gotten the car I'd got and we were uh, riding around out in the country and took a picture and that might've been on my Facebook and him tagged. So I imagine that they discovered, found out about him on the Facebook, what have you, but he's not active online at all. Um. And the the only person I knew to ask about him that uh, works up at the jail, he, you know, what I heard, you know, wasn't the best, you know. I hope he's doing okay, but, you know, he's not where he would be. And it's interesting and important to point out that the person I was hanging out with up at the jail, which is who I met, this guy from the guy that the, uh, up at the jail that used to live with was dating that guy that they're trying to say that I supposedly did stuff with. So not only would I have had to, I don't know, you know, like betray a friend because the other guy who owned the house that uh, my friend that works at the jail lived out and everything you know i was cool with him you know i always grew up knew, knowing him and he you know he was who he was but we never really hung out or anything up until that time so yeah about different dislike internet personalities I was only able to lurk for about a week or so because for lack of a better phrase the vibes were off. There were hundreds of threads, aside from the usual suspects of Chris Chan, Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Bill, and Amber. They want to try to put out, like, this veneer that also, you know, I mean, they, they have called me from just, you know, that they've acted like, and from what they've said, they're making it out that I'm, um, like, some misogynistic, pig that hurts women you know and usually people that would be that or are labeled that you know they're heterosexual they're not bi or whatever you know Amberlynn Reed basically any semi-notable YouTuber or so YouTuber. they can't even whatever like they just try to label me with all the labels even though some of the labels don't fit with one another if that makes sense list or internet personality you could think of each had their own thread with a disturbing amount of details about them from real names dead names of trans individuals home addresses the whole nine yards exactly and that's another thing like the the person filthy animal has done with his website he's made a website and where it's just you know i, I mean here, we'll fucking, we'll look at it. Only satire and comedy. There's nothing satire and comedy about this. See? 
if this was only entertainment, satire, and comedy, see, you, you can't put that on here and think that applies like on YouTube when you're putting my address and shit like that there. And and put me in a, a negative light. And see, he has to have multiple channels because he knows that what he's doing is not. That's why he has five fucking channels. And there, here he has a woman. You know, they talk about women, and it, it's just. I'm sorry, I did not know it was going to be on that page, or I wouldn't have displayed it like that. They're probably going to try to hit me now. You know. Books, you, you, you talk any more shit of me now, though, or anything? I, I, I'm glad that they they went ahead and decided to dox you. Just so I fucking know you. I mean, you know. And see, he uses my face there. He uses my image without my percent per permission. He ain't no brown square. Well, well, no, oh my God, I cannot believe they got all this shit. Well, there's a pretty good indicator you did have something to do with the CPS thing, so she's not lying about it. <laughs> this is the type of stuff that he does, though. I'm just going to show um, one video of his. I, should, I shouldn't play any of them. Let me see what it is first. Yeah, we'll, we'll play the first part, because the first part makes fun of me. Putting my face right there, and, and, and you know, that's just to try to hurt me because I was in a wreck, and two individuals died, and they trying to make me out to be like a murderer, even though I was completely co- uh, well, I wouldn't call I did get knocked out, but I came to, and have anything in my system is what I mean to say, I wasn't fucked up, it was in the morning, and it was investigated and everything, and they tried to make it seem like they they lie and say I sued the family. No, I didn't. That that I got money out of them. That the family hates me and everything. When I fucking had a family member literally reach out to me at the hospital, you know, I fuck that. Yeah, that that's threatening. Saying the smell of death around you. Oh, a square. Yeah. Take my face and misuse it. And make sure that you take a, a screenshot picture whenever I had a little uh, blemish on my face. And they're my dog, and they want to talk about stick a cane and saddy dog. I might take a tote, but I ain't got no straws. I can't use a straw. I'm not going to dox her or whatever. Fuck that shit. 
Are you seen enough? So he does have dumb genius on here. Okay. Well, I will say dumb genius and to the dumb gene and gene team. You know, obviously, I, you know, it is what it is. You know, I ain't, I ain't a part of it. That's cool, but uh, I'm just going to say that, you know, I do apologize for the antagonism, but shit wasn't handled right. Things weren't done right on both sides. It's just the way it is. See, they use all these pictures uh, of people and they make, they, they're selling shirts of dumb genius. And they might say, oh, you talk shit on all them. So, well, I'm not talking shit on them no more because the enemy of my enemy. All right. So, you know, they're using these pictures of Andrea against her will. And, you know, she's MIA from what I've heard. I mean, I don't know. The Warfield Hall, you know, doing this to. But, you know, this, I, I really don't have too much to say about this because they 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 were uh, in on it. You know, they got excommunicated, basically. Damn, she looks fucked up in that picture. But again, this is not this locale shit. This is what needs to end about the internet. Like if we have to go to legislators or whatever, it will get it done. It will get it done. That's nasty shit. She, she shouldn't be showing. He just puts all this shit everywhere. Wow, he's even put his muck. He's even put her mother on Skip the Games. I'm sorry, Mama Bird, for that. I'm sorry. But this is it. This is the guy that, that uh, you know, is protected by the working. This is their CEO. You know, that blood, you know, there. It makes him real. It's really entertaining looking, you know. Let's get back to the video, to this video. And for most of these people, I couldn't find a valid reason why they had their own individual threads. Exactly. Because there is no reason. They will justify and make up reasons. Just because you, you might be skilled or a little fluent in the art of being able to justify and persuade doesn't mean you're making a logical or justify an argument on something. Not only that, but the slurs just flowed like water there, which is, you know, concerning. On Kiwi Farms, there was a section called the Beauty Room or something similar. Basically, it was dedicated to very small online artists and beauty micro-influencers, some of whom I followed online for years. And at some point, it struck me. These people have threads not because they've done anything wrong, but simply because someone disliked them enough to make one. Eventually, I stopped browsing Kiwi Farms because of the off fives. I stopped watching Gino Samuel's series because it was legitimately upsetting. Not because of anything Chris Chan has done, although Chris Chan has done a lot of disturbing things, but because of the extent that people were willing to go to East stalk a person for, lest we forget, 15 years and counting. And once that hashtag dropped Kiwi Farms debacle was unfolding online, I asked myself, why have I been engaging in low-cal culture? As stated before, I was never an active participant, but rather an observer, a bystander. I guess at that time, I interacted with this content in a way that your aunt might interact with a piece of juicy gossip. Harmless and fun, but still usually at someone's expense. And that was, for the most part, how I treated it, as harmless gossip. My toxic trait is that I do love a bit of hot goss I always have, even since elementary school. But when e-stalking and death threats are masquerading as hot goss, well, that's where we run into a problem. I think now is a good time to define what exactly lol cow means. Very simply put, a lol cow is someone who can be milked for laughs. Usually it's someone who's very eccentric or weird online, someone we can point and laugh at and go, oh wow, this person is such a weirdo, I'm glad I'm not like them. 
Usually, though, it went farther than pointing and laughing and often veered into being actively antagonistic. If you're thinking, this sounds like bullying, you are 100% correct. It is. The Mother Jones article, which I will link in the description, points out that many of Kiwi Farms' targets are different in some way. May are neurodivergent or LGBT or outspoken women or their arch nemesis, a combination of those. Of course, cis het men weren't free from ridicule and targets ran the gamut politically from right to left wing. Al Kovic, formerly a funhouse, had his own thread as well. And sure, he's guilty of a lot of things like harassing female employees at Machinima and Rooster Teeth and cheating on his wife a lot. But if you remember, all this came to light because Adam was having dangerous liaisons with someone who turned out to be a catfish. And the Google Drive with all the screenshots was posted on Kiwi Farms. I'd hazard a guess to say that the catfisher was a Kiwi Farms user as well. For a time, I was under the impression that these people were derided online because of some objectively awful thing they'd done. Chris Chan, for instance, is pretty- And that's how I started out last year when it came to Dagbar. Now, some of these people came online, like, I don't know much about Chris Chan or Cyrax. All that I've gathered on Cyrax is the fact that there's a story about someone named, um, and I mean no disrespect by calling them this. This is all I can pull from my head from the video I saw, but it blind Billy. So it leads me to believe that, yeah, he's, you know, which is fucked up. Um, but do I necessarily agree or think that somebody like, like, like a fusion, because when Cyrax had that, when Music Biz Marty went to Cyrax's hometown, and Cyrax did go over there and instigate it, you know, like Marty said, you know, come on over, you know, at, when he was walking over already, he did tell him that he could come on over, but, you know, I think he knew with all the stuff he'd done online with Cyrax, Cyrax wouldn't resist. And so he went over and he, he beat him up. And not long after here, um, another person went to maybe the same uh, place and got a room or whatever. It was by Cyrax's. And they stood outside Cyrax's house. Cyrax was assaulted them. They had Cyrax arrested. And he was saying it was for um, the children that Cyrax is hurt. If that is true, I I, I can understand it. I can understand. I, I can understand. Not only can I understand it, or like not understand it, like I get it. I've been through it, but I I can I can conceptualize. Pretty transparently a misogynist, a racist, and a frequent e beggar. Other frequent flyers on the site are chronic liars and scammers. Johnny Craig, who went from being post-hardcore royalty. And I, and that that's another thing. They'll call these people from Workiverse. They'll say that I'm an e-beggar. Other than the ticker that goes down, just like on any other channel. I do not go out of my way to say, hit the cash app. Nor do I try to pull the books and say if people want to be able to comment or come up on the panel, they're going to have to hit my cash app. Like, I'm not an e -bagger. Stop playing with your food, Brownie. Brownie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a video. I'm, I'm going to put you on camera. You acting like that. I can't resist it. Go back to doing. No, no, no. Go back to doing what you were doing now, damn it. So I can put you on. I want to show it on. Now, damn it. Go lay down. Go back over there and play with your food. What you were doing. Brownie. 
Granny. Hold on. You gonna go lay down? You gonna go lay down? I want you to go go back to doing what you were doing, playing. Granny. Brownie boy. Going on, Brownie boy. Shake. Man, you being stubborn. Good boy. Good boy. What? You see those scar? Those intentions in my Yeah. I wasn't lying. I cut sideways uh, up and down. I never heard the expression if you're serious or for attention you do sideways if you're for real you're up and down i never knew that so i did both like i i just cut 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 like cut 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 <laughs> dag burn so if you look at my neck You can see the scars. I never lied about that. But people act like I did. They sure do. They sure do. All right. Let me close that. Remote. To oh. frequently milk locale is an abusive person who got multiple people hooked on heroin and most recently got his son taken away from him because he tested positive for fentanyl. Some of these locales then legitimately deserve to be in prison, if what Kiwi Farm Caesars said was true, that is. But others, what were their crimes? According to them, being autistic, being autistic in public. Yeah, what's my crime? What is my crime? I don't have one. I have not committed a crime. I may have violated the code of ethic when people doxed me and I doxed them back. But as I have said before, when other people throw that code out the window, when it comes to other people, they throw that they throw themselves being treated with that same code. And AD, he had to push me to the fourth time before I uh, put his his n number out. He knew who Mustard Squirrel was. And Mustard Squirrel's over there in his chat constantly doing shit to try to antagonize me. And whether or not I was actually stream sniping him or just watching him and over there talking before I got banned, he just let it go on. And I took notice and I didn't say anything. I didn't bitch or whine like people say, but I am pointing it out now. Being trans, being both trans and black. 
being an outspoken, if a bit disingenuous feminist in the world of gaming, making OCs with stuff on stars, the list goes on. And I'm not just rattling random things off, by the way. These were the characteristics of people with threads on that site. And that, apparently, was enough to have her life turned upside down by having her dead name leaked or being doxxed or being stalked in real life. I'm not going to try to wax analytical about why. And that's a key thing, is that these people go from e-stalking to real-life stalking. When you're calling and leaving me voicemail after voicemail, or calling after calling, because you're mad, because you're stalkingly, obsessively watching me, and I'm not even paying attention to you. Don't even know you exist anymore, trying not to, and you call me again and again. That, that's why I said all that shit the other day. Because I am fucking sick of it. Tired. Worn out. Done. And I wanted to make you little motherfuckers mad. I wanted retribution. For the unfair unjust shit you've done towards me. And from those fucking comments, one being a fake account of y'all's, I'd say I succeeded. People who engage in low-call culture online? Ali Breland, the person who wrote the Mother Jones article, does a decent enough job. My reasoning for it, however, was a bit different than the one posited in the article. I just like being messy, I guess. Something I'll need to work on. But I will say something other than hashtag drop Kiwi Farm Saga showed me that this kind of wasn't worth it. Ever since late 2015, I've interacted with artist spaces online. Yes, I was a DeviantArt art girly and a Tumblr girly, but I started out on Instagram, eventually abandoning it for other platforms once they took away the chronological feed in early 2016. In my time on Instagram, I came across an artist who, at the time, went by Tirza. By the way, I am aware that this is that person's dead name, but it was also their online handle basically everywhere at the peak of their popularity at the time, so I'm kind of at a loss for how to refer to them. Tirza, like most of Kiwi Farm's targets, was autistic, non-binary, and perhaps a bit cringe. I really like their art, though. I would even argue that they were the blueprint for a specific brand of creepy, cute gore art. Well, I'm to... kind of at a loss. Right. In my time on Instagram, I didn't under... on Instagram, eventually Kiwi Farm Saga showed me that this is like being messy, I guess. Online, Ali Breland, the person in real life. I'm not going to try to wax analytical about why people engage in low-call culture online. Ali Breland, the person who wrote the Mother Jones article, does a decent enough job. My reason for it, however, was a bit different than the one posited in the article. I just like being messy, I guess. Something I'll need to work on. But I will say something other than the hashtag drop Kiwi Farm Saga showed me that this kind of wasn't worth it. Ever since late 2015, I've interacted with artist spaces online. Yes, I was a DeviantArt girly and a Tumblr girly, but I started out on Instagram. Eventually, time went by parody at the time. So I'm kind of at a loss for how to refer to them. Tirza, like most of Kiwi Farm's targets, was autistic, non-binary, and perhaps a bit cringe. I really like their art, though. I would even argue that they were the blueprint for a specific brand of creepy, cute gore art on Tumblr from 2016 to 2018. And if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. And if you don't, you just got to find out. In fact, the Instagram algorithm was so good at pinpointing my interests that I ended up finding a not insignificant amount of quote unquote, Tears of Copycats on the Explore page. Tears' main draw was their art style, the frequency of their uploads, which were several drawings a day at their peak, and their gigantic roster of original characters with interconnected stories. Yes, even some with prominent cell phone scars. Tears was, to put it lightly, a troubled youth. From what I gathered after following them online for a few years, they endured some abuse as a young teen in a toxic relationship had an eating disorder, and when I first discovered them, actively self-harmed. According to them, art was an outlet, and creating and drawing original characters was a special interest of theirs as an autistic person. 
They found a lot of notoriety from their skillful art and also from their mirror selfies of a. If I could just take a pause to say that. The way I was feeling around the time I came on and decided to make a channel. That going into topics to discuss and dissect and pick them apart and talk about or look at true crime or the news worthy stuff and talk about it was an outlet for me is an outlet i like doing it but if i can't do it without being hated and targeted from just about the start like i have been then i am gonna have to abandon it and I don't know what that's going to do. Um, I, I don't see how they have any uh, continuity or long-term things that can be reached because of that. I'm going to show something. And I'm showing it because... There was a course that I took, and which now I'm frantically wanting to look for the damn. Now, now I wish I hadn't I thought of that. Because now I'm wondering where the hell is my uh fuck. Well, it was a fucking folder that I had. Oh, wait. Is this... Yep, there it is. Oh, wait. That... Well, <laughs> there's nothing in it. That pisses me off, dude. That means it's put up somewhere. That's why I hate moving. Cause I... Seems like I'm just destined that I'm gonna lose things. And mis have them misplaced. All right, now think. Where could that have went? I literally got the thing that the certificate came out. Come on, man. I really don't like this shit. The secret language of birthdays. That's the book that, uh, part of that is where I got how I, what I got my reading done from art, where he got, drew his stuff from. Where the fuck would that be at, man? Dude, that's fucked up. Man, I cannot. There's no telling.
Hold on just a second. Man, that really fucking bums me out, dude. Man, there was a folder. Fucking bank folder. Shit. That really fucking bums me out, man. I thought it was always there. It's not in my binder, is it? Part of me wants to believe I did. I put it in my binder. It's my grandfather and grandmother's uh, diplomas. There's my copies of. Uh, hmm. I could show that. But who needs it? I mean, who cares? Well, that was a bad idea anyways, but fuck, man. What, that's still, I want to know where that's at. That fucking, it does not sit right with me. I've got this, but. Tell me I can pull it up online, a virtual thing of it. That way I can confirm it. I gotta check my email. Hold on, Brownie. Everybody else, hold on just a second. I'm looking to see if I... What is it, buddy? I think I know what you want. You want glass ad? Is that it? Do you want glass ad? Got your butt just hanging up in the air. Bent back. Like you're about to get up, but you're not. <laughs> you want me to stop scratching you? All right, I stopped scratching you. Now you got your tail wagging. What do you want? Oh, did it go to my other email? Oh, no, I got it sent to my phone. But I don't know why it's not on my email.
Oh, I don't know why it didn't go to my email. You know, I've I've never tried to consider or make myself out to be anything or, you know, anyone special or, you know, I, I just wanted to be treated, uh, I just wanted to be treated how people treat each other. Uh-oh, looks like I got something I got to pay. I owe dues. Well, I guess I'll pay him. That's what you do when you have something you got to pay, you pay it. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, buddy. I know. I gotta put my debit card down. You're rolling your, he's rolling his head up against my leg. Hold on just a second, buddy. Processing this paint up. All right, good. I love you, buddy. Yes, I do. I love you. Yes. I'm just trying to find something real quick. If I can't find it in my room, I'm going to see if I can find it. On line. You know, you look like Toto. That's what people say. They try to say you look like Toto. You know it? You know it? You know it? And they sent me another code. Trying to pull up the certificate that I fucking earned. Should have the fucking actual copy, but I where it's at.
Well, that's not good. They don't have it on here. Well, I was going to show that, uh, you know, I had completed, uh, I was going to show this book. It's called A Br Bridged Light. It's wrote, written by Rex Hutchins, A Bridge to Light. And uh, you read it and study it when you complete a uh, Master Craftsman's course that I uh, took and did, which was Master Craftsman uh, 1. Don't tell me, is that what I'm looking for? I folder, but no, that's not the folder I'm looking for. Those are law folders. There's my math book that I took in college. The one that I had to do my work in and show my work. What the fuck, dude? I wonder if I can request another. But see, I, that folder had each course quiz I did and had everything. And I'll find it some other time. I just fucking hate that. I hate shit to be in this place. Let me let you out, Brownie. I'll be right back. I can't find a... Where, Brad? Red light? Green light. Good boy. I can't find... You feel better? You're gonna have to go to um, what you call I have to go to the store. Well, I see you're resting, so you tired. You're are you, are you tired, Grant? You tired, Grandpa? Did you hear me? You said you tired from that? Yeah, from what they did. You seem tired to me. I wish I felt like going. Well, not for me, just don't. Just don't go that much anymore. If you can keep a, a look, at, he wasn't there. I need to see him. I need to see one of them. Um, just, I guess, for a checkout. I to find, uh, I had a folder of mine that had my uh, thing. I can 
my course I completed for the Scottish Rite, and I, I don't know what happened to it. I don't know where I put it or what. Be a lot. I mean, it'd be easy peasy for me to just pull out my apron or my entered apprentice book, show the cover of it. People have tried to say I've lied and misrepresented misrep myself in all in all different types of ways. Whether it's uh, oh he. He didn't ever have anything like he said happened in 2019, or he lied about his background and who he is. No, the fuck, I did not. Where is that folder? I think I may have put it actually in there. Okay, those are all the those are all the monthly magazines. There's my rehab. Hell, I could pull that out and prove I was in rehab actually, but at school, old school pictures and stuff. But this one, more full. How many you got what I'm looking for? Yeah, okay, there's all my monthly Masonic magazines. That I got probably for year or so wow oh, for some reason though folder is not in sight how the hell did I just leave the craft of the folder? Man, it pissed me off. I'm sorry, people that are watching this or tuned in, but. My mind gets uh, into overdrive when something like this happens. Because I didn't even realize that. Tell me that's it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Just a little persistence, that's all it takes. I'm gonna show this. Because you know, there is somebody that's in the midst. Probably more than one somebody. And uh, you know, my streams and stuff largely have they have never been about or anything when it comes to anything like this, but I want to share it because it shows the type of person that I am. I'm the type of person that strives to build their character and spirit better and to act better every day. 
building myself into something better and better. So this is the uh, well, dead. You know, but and I got a personal letter, and this is a. Uh, the uh, coursework and stuff. I'm not going to go into that or show any of that because be improper. But um, yeah, I'm, I was real proud when I earned that. And I got that last year. And it's it's nice. I mean, if that doesn't show, you know, last year I took a course. Now, yeah, it was a course that necessarily wasn't for work or a traditional college course, but it still was a course, and it lasted you know, several months, and I completed it, and uh, and then this year, not only that, but this year. I went to another center of learning and I completed a course there as well. And then after that, I got certified. And those were big accomplishments to me. And I know back when I was in active addiction, ripping and running the streets and stuff, I never, 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 never in all my time, I would have never uh, been able to accomplish the stuff that I've done. Sorry. I just wouldn't have been able to. And I know that would only be able to be uh, discerned from people that know me close and stuff. So you kind of either have to take, take my word for it or not. Whatever it's... You know, it's up to you. Now, why isn't this fucking these uh, what you call it? It's not going to my email. Well, I guess I'll just have to fucking use my phone again. Again, I'll be right back to the video and live. I'm sorry. Just doing something. And I may have to, you know, maybe I'll have to start just over long later, later on, because from what someone told me, if I go, you guys may not go, but you'll. You'll fall off. There won't be anything about me to talk about or make up as you do. But you know that I, I'm proud of, of the stuff that I've accomplished. And make no mistake. They hate it. They literally tried to keep me from accomplishing one of the things that 
And if it hadn't been for God, I, I may have lost it. Pastel bedroom full of stuffed toys wearing the Hallmark late 2010s Tumblr girl uniform. People, usually very young people, idolized them, not only for their art, but because they were a pretty, skinny, femme-presenting person who was struggling just like they were. Tumblr at the time had a tendency to be a sort of negative feedback loop of pro-Anna and aesthetic self-harm content, and I would be lying if I said Tirza wasn't also contributing to that, even if unintentionally. And I did side-eye it myself, but being a teen and sort of new to these things, I mostly kept it to myself. I didn't want to speak out of turn. Eventually, after amassing a sizable following, plenty of copycats, and hundreds of dollars in art commissions on a weekly basis, Tears had got some detractors and eventually got a community farm spread of their own, listing all their transgressions, some real, some made up, most of them inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Around the time I discovered this thread, Tears was dating someone named Bailey. The relationship was a tumultuous one, and it ended with Tears at that point going by Dolly Guts online posting a full thread about the abuse they suffered at the hands of Bailey. Bailey was kind of a head case. This part is going to be a bit convoluted, so stay with me. Firstly, Bailey had their name legally changed to Bailey Lavelle. This is notable because the main antagonist of Tears' world of original characters was also named Bailey Lavelle. This was also notable because Bailey the character was based off a real person who had abused Tears in the past, who is also the in-universe abuser of Tears' self-insert OC, Ash. And yes, Bailey, Tears' partner, knew all of this. If that's not insane enough, Bailey was an active self-harmer. This isn't a moral failing on its own, but once they entered a relationship, Bailey coerced Tears into resuming self-harm when they abstained from doing so for a while. If that's not insane enough, then Bessie, I have some bad news, it gets worse. Bailey lied about being a detransitioning trans man. They claimed their voice was deep, not because they were a cis man, but because they were taking deep and later regretted it. Bailey, of course, tears it into sexual contact when they had trauma surrounding it and were hesitant to do so with a person who had male genitalia. The worst part about all of this is that most of the hate directed tears his way from Kiwi Farms was only partially about their perceived transgressions and mostly about what their partner had done and was doing online. So not only did they suffer at the hands of Bailey, but they suffered because of what Bailey was doing to others. Eventually though, they broke up. The expose thread was posted and things quieted down. These days, they don't post nearly as much as they used to and have stopped using Tumblr entirely, despite it being their biggest platform because that's where the majority of the hate was centralized. It was a complete mess of a saga, but thankfully it seems to be fully in tears as rear view now, on the surface anyway. This is but one very small example of the ways low power culture is harmful, and I argue one of the less harmful examples. It stayed online, it lasted for only a few weeks, no one was stopped in real life, and nobody died. But there are quite a few people, despite whatever Josh Woman says does or doesn't happen, who can't say the same thing. I kind of hate that the bar is so low when it comes to deciding whether or not an episode of online hate like this is harmful or not. Make no mistake, it all is. Dogpiling people online is far from new and shows no signs of slowing down. Sometimes it takes the form of legitimate criticism like that Michaela girl who's lying about mascara and breaking advertising regulations. But a lot of the time it's just straight up bullying because someone doesn't stay mean up. With Kiwi Farms, the line between legitimate criticism and bullying was heavily blurred. Chomos, fair game. Tumblr artists getting a little too big in their britches also fair game, apparently. Although Kiwi Farms, the website's days, are likely numbered based on what it's apparently costing Joshua Moon to run it on bootleg servers, Kiwi Farms as a concept will likely never die. It started way back in 2007 with the inaugural Something Awful Christian thread, was bolstered with Gamergate, and took a heavy blow with hashtag drop Kiwi Farms. But targeted hate campaigns online will never die out. And although I was never an active participant in cow-tipping, as I called it, the existence of bystanders and observers like me likely didn't help with the proliferation of it. And sometimes that passive bystanding turns into active antagonism. And sometimes that active antagonism on a large enough scale Facts. turns into lives lost. People say the Wild West era of the internet has long since ended, but I don't think we've really seen just how wild the saloon can get yet. And that's concerning. 
that's gonna be it for me for this video a little shorter than usual but it's something i wanted to talk about after reading the mother jones article which is again in the description follow me on twitter read my medium articles and listen to my podcast we're back we had about a month long hiatus but we are back on the youtubes and on the spotify's and the apples and the googles and you can Make sure you check out it's just Saren. Um, I was gonna check this. I hadn't watched this, but I guess I'm gonna watch it now since it technically Twitter. is supposed to be the kryptonite and make it to where you know how not to be a locale. Supposedly, everyone, if we ever meet in public, I am going to shove your ass down your throat. And make you eat your underwear! The internet is a wild place. One of wonder. Ah, no, 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 You get out! Friendly conversation. Somebody should line you up against the wall. You should be near fucking children. A place where people treat each other with respect and kindness. It truly is like nothing else. And with it being such a unique place, it has many of its own cultural fixtures. One of these being the infamous lol cow. Lol cow. One, internet. Slang, derogatory, a person whose eccentric or foolish behavior can be exploited to amuse onlookers. An exceptional individual who attracts an onslaught of attention from either the spectacle they make of themselves or the reaction to those who just wish to milk them for lols. And while there are many unique brands of lol cows from your spurgy grifters such as Mersh, ah! horror shows like Ross, <laughs> Self-destructive nightmares the likes of Nikocado. Right. The embodiment of a Greek tragedy such as Chris Chan. It's my fault. I want everything about my house off the internet. They all tend to follow a similar path when entering their lol cow status, creating a spectacle of themselves, poorly reacting to those who enjoy the shit show, refusing to either take responsibility for their actions or simply ignore the trolls and being completely inept at stopping themselves from repeating the cycle. And while for the most part people are content to just scoff and laugh at the lol cows, I personally think it's even more interesting to explore just how someone can become an exceptional individual. So take a journey with me as we explore the how-to guide of becoming a lol cow. You like kombucha? I love kombucha! Drinks like pee and smells even worse. Stumbling into lol cow status is both a lot easier and not quite as simple as you might think. In order to become a coveted bovine of laughter, you must bring the proper amount of attention to yourself. Just about anyone can post a video, fuck up on stream, or get a little unhinged on Twitter, but that's all that is. An embarrassing situation. And so what? You made an ass for yourself. If you have any amount of self-awareness or self-respect, dodging the proverbial bullet is an easy one. Address the situation and move on, ignore it like it never happened, or just go about as normal. By simply doing one of these things, you can easily avoid the pitfalls many others stumble into. But you see, that's what separates the exceptional from the mundane. An exceptional individual won't be able to stop themselves from repeating their negative behaviors or the odd things that caused them to be interesting in the first place. Whether it be from a viral moment or an asshole like me stumbling across them, there really is no escaping the inevitable. In the case of someone like the patron saint of lol cows, Chris Chan, the oddly thorough cataloging of his life mixed with his consistent bouts of hilarious behavior, such as the magnum opus of comics Sonichu and the public spectacle of his so-called love quest, his 15 minutes of fame would have ended with the initial thread on something awful. But due to a mixture of his near constant antics, I recycle my own semen, and his willingness to interact with trolls, and for God's sake, 
Stay away from that Psychopedia Dramatica page. Would lead him into a lifelong state of internet mockery and cataloging, becoming arguably the most documented person in history, with it only kind of coming to an end 20 years after it started, when he was arrested for, well... You what? And even now in his prison cell, Chris's unending need for attention has led him to continue sending letters to those who wish to mock and archive his life. Though, with a case like Chris Chan, you can easily blame his autism and neurodivergency for why he might not be able to resist the urge to engage. So, what about those who haven't been touched by the tism? Well, we have endless examples of that to look at as well. From Mersh, Boogie, Wings of Redemption, and DSP, they all exhibit a similar habit of behavior that gives them exceptional status. All four of these healthy-weighted gentlemen built themselves up as respectable content creators, only to routinely be caught in lies, scandals, grifting, and outright stirring of the pot. One of the greatest examples of this is the former YouTube legend, Wings of Redemption. Wings brought attention to himself by becoming one of the first big gaming YouTubers, only to routinely piss off his audience by taking them for granted, fall through on his promises, and piss in the faces of those he called friends. Wings took some credit. Oh, but you know what? Fuck, fuck this guy then. How is he going to cry about compilation videos and be like, the trolls are coming to get me when he's funding people that are fucking with you? That's, that, exactly. you know what? We're of the no, same pay, mind no, on this no. one. Just to end up with a dead channel and struggling Twitch stream, where anytime someone would beat him in a game or, God forbid, make a joke at his expense, it would lead to him raging. Fuck! Fuck! Banning. I'm banning anybody trying to get See, this advice. And making a pathetic ass of himself. See, this guy uh, was funding, or apparently they said that he was funding for this other guy to be attacked, but then he was griping about it himself. All over some jokes and dying in Call of Duty. And this is a cycle of behavior that he has repeated for years, becoming one of the most popular targets for trolling and spawning countless clip channels where no selective editing or added mockery is even needed. Simply showcasing the behavior he exhibits is all it takes. Much like with Chris Chan, this just goes to show that it's not just a single moment that will turn you into a lol cow, but rather a vicious cycle of behavior. But We'll get into that in our next section. The perpetuation of the vicious cycle of stupidity is the key to entering lil cow status. Like I've said before, it's not a matter of if, but rather when you will do something that elicits the unintended laughter of others. It's human nature to make mistakes after all, but it's like we were saying before with Chris Chan and Wings, the consistent exuding of toxic and hilarious behavior is what separates someone who fell into an embarrassing situation from someone who transforms into a lol cow. With Wings never taking steps to calm down and just not freak the fuck out on his stream, and Chris's never-ending need for attention causing him to continually seek out validation and interact with trolls, it's this very behavior that causes you to... Well, that's why I turned the comments off. I'm not interacting with trolls while I'm doing the stream. You become... Because I'm doing the stream on watching, giving my thoughts, and etc. An exceptional individual. Something we can see if we take a look at our previously mentioned friend, Dark Side Phil. Much like Wings, good old Phil Honk Snor Burnell came to the forefront of the internet by being one of the first people to get big doing Let's Plays. And while his constant snorting, ear grating laugh, <laughs> and overall obnoxious personality, and support the effort. Now I'm in a situation, if there's no clear end in sight, there's no way out, you have to contribute if you want to keep seeing me be able to put out videos on YouTube, period. Would normally have led him to never finding fame. At the time, there was very slim pickings as to who was consistently uploading gameplay footage, especially of currently releasing games. So against all odds, our little DSP became one of the titans of early Let's Plays on YouTube. But just as quickly as he rose, he would fall. Due to the previously mentioned issues, as well as a continual onslaught of far more entertaining and higher quality channels, and the landfill we call 
YouTube Let's Plays. His history of freakouts, grifts for cash, decline in content, and obviously this gem of a video. Phil delivered time and time again, handing trolls material to work with on silver platters. And with it, he would continue the same cycle. Denial, anger, pleading, repeat. DSP could have easily ended his long stint as a locale many years ago if he had just taken stock in his situation and moved on, or better yet, improved his content and conduct at any point. Unlike someone who might gain the ire of the internet over something truly messed up, Phil was just a clown others enjoyed laughing at. And I think the best way to make my point here is to contrast Phil and those like him with someone who escaped his status as a lol cow. Hello everyone, this is Running On Empty Food Review. That's right, Review Bra. Good old report of the week. Review Bra and his channel have been around for over 10 years at this point, going back to his younger years in middle school up to the present day. And while Review Bra never did anything all that ridiculous, it was the strange oddity of his character that attracted the initial negative attention. There was something kind of hilarious about seeing a dude dressed up in a suit, reviewing fast food in his car, while doing his best to be as polite and proper as possible, which inevitably caught the attention of trolls and would lead to the Report of the Week's videos becoming a staple of cringe compilations during the peak of YouTube's cringe era, even getting multiple videos dedicated to him from Elvis the Alien. Review Bra's initial reaction was to turn off the comments on his channel and avoid trolls like the plague, something that might have got him a bit more ire at the time since he was still reacting, but by leaving it at that for the most part and almost never addressing the criticism and trolling in his videos, those who came to laugh would soon find themselves being starved for content outside of the obvious oddities of Review Bra's personality. And in turn, Review Bra would come to embrace his audience and their fondness of his personality, ultimately allowing comments again and becoming one of the most beloved and protected figures on the platform. I bring this up to show that even if you find yourself in a situation like Phil's, if you play your cards right, you can always turn things around. I think one more example will put everything into perspective though. So of all people, let's talk about Nightmind. Now you might be thinking, Madison, when has Nightmind ever been considered a lol cow? That's my point. After years of building himself up, one of the best content creators in YouTube's horror and ARG sphere, he ended up coming out as a furry. Who is attending a furry convention? For the very first time today. One of the many things that can easily get you thrown into the realms of lolcowdom. But because Nightmind didn't change his personality or bring unnecessary attention to that was weird. the situation, it never really became a point of contention within his audience. And we all know just how divisive the furry question can be to people. But by simply handling the situation with grace, thought, and care, Nightmind proved that you can avoid ever entering the dreaded realm of exceptional. Oh boy, it's shilling time. Yeah, hi. It's grifting, shilling, whatever you want to call it time. I'm just here to plug my Patreon. Because a lot of the stuff I cover is either music or media based, it's almost inevitable that whatever video I'm posting is going to get that red sticker at me thrown in the no no bin. So if you like what I do and you want to see more of my kind of paywall, mostly. It's a term that I think fits perfectly in the lol cow equation. Because out of everything, just taking something way too seriously, it's a term that I think fits yours. Whether it be in response to someone being a bit too terminally online or just taking something become a staple in meme culture over the past. The term touch grass has become a staple in meme culture over the past few years. Whether it be in response to someone being a bit too terminally online or just taking something way too seriously. It's a term that I think fits perfectly in the lol cow equation. Because out of everything we've discussed so far, the consistent issue has simply been the inability to take a step back, be honest, stop reacting, or, in essence, touch some fucking grass. Everyone we've talked about has never been able to move on 
whether it's Mersh being poked at by Pot Awful and never just resisting the urge to cope and lash out, Wing's continual freakouts on stream, causing people to make fun of him, only for him to spawn with another freakout, or DSP just, well, being DSP, it never allows them to break their cycles. Yet, when we see the likes of Nightmind, Review Bra, and even someone like Monday Mad of all people, who was a lol cow for years, we can see that if you simply take a few steps away from the keyboard and rethink your approach to things, we can see that not only is redemption possible, but outright avoidance of ever becoming a continual spectacle. Now, the obvious caveat here is horror cows, or for those uninitiated, the Jonathan Rosses and Amos Yees of the internet. People who gain notoriety and are thought to be trolls or just another lol cow that end up becoming monsters. But that's just a beast all of its own. The difference between a lol cow and a horror cow are obvious, so to me, the point still stands. If you want to avoid the cycle or end your time as a lol cow, touch grass. I guess what I'm trying to get at with this video is that becoming a laughing stock on the internet is almost always a choice. When something happens or you make a mistake, unless it's something truly horrendous, you can easily mitigate the situation by either being honest and owning up to it or just ignoring the mockery until it goes away. People are people and mistakes happen. We all end up doing some goofy shit from time to time that might blow up in our faces. But if you simply touch some grass and take a step back, that's all it will become. A mistake or embarrassing moment that eventually fades away. But if you double down and react like an idiot, or you melt down and attack your support system, or worse off, engage with the trolls by giving them exactly what they want, well, that's kind of an energy that once you invite into your life, you're stuck with. So take my advice. Don't become a lol cow. Be mindful of how you walk through the minefield that is the internet. Learn from the mistakes of the people we've discussed. And if worse comes to worse, don't write a check that your ass can't cash. But with all that being said, subscribe, support me on Patreon, follow me on Twitter. I'll see you in the next video. Check out at Grey Mobs to see and check in irrelevant content and broadcast.